uh, one of the few floor intakes that we've seen too. Tell us more about your team and your robot. Yeah, so we've made a lot of progress since our uh, day one update video. Uh, as you can see, our active intake has updated quite a lot. We fully polished our linkage, and I believe we can actuate it now. It's a little bit jittery, but yeah, we can bring it up fully, and that gets us within the full 18 by 18. This video on fun is made possible by viewers like you and also the following. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Uh, we are 14 inches high, and you might actually be wondering how we do that with such a huge linear extension here. And the answer actually lies within a worm gear that we use to actuate these. You hold this real quick? Yeah. So our linear slides actually fold completely down under the 14 inch high limit, which allows us to go completely down. Currently our procedure includes driving completely down and then intaking, driving out, and raising our slides again to score. Can we see some of that happen? Currently, uh, we're still working on the actual outtake mechanism. Is, is so, any of this, uh, right. if you're not able to move it, uh, electronically, are you going to need to ask for this? We can move it for the intake. Sure. So this is our outtake mechanism. We just have to mount it on, and then it'll just rotate up. So it'll grab them, flip up, and then we can open the claw and drop them onto the backdrop. Yeah, so you can probably see that our intake's goal is mainly to get it into this back black area here, where we will actually have the claw seen here, pick it up, and then be used to deliver. Yeah, be used to deliver the object. Our main goal is that compared to just using a claw with all of the um, kind of trickiness that comes up with dealing a passive intake, using an active intake feeding into a claw will allow us to collect the uh, pixels a lot faster. How about your uh, elevator stages? Can you just talk about what you uh, plan on doing or what you are using for that? Yeah, so what we're using them for is, so we actually have four stage Viper slides right now, which are from our last year's robot, which we really don't need four, we only need two but it was a lot more work to make it two, so we're just using four. But we've actually added a hard stop that doesn't let it go past two stages, because two stages is all we'll ever need to get it up high enough. And then uh, anything from your uh, drone launching mechanism you want to cover as well? Yeah, so we worked very hard on that overnight, and this guy here has been working on it very hard this afternoon as well. So pr so pretty much we have a servo back here that we use as like kind of like a trigger to where once it's released it'll f fire the the drone and then we just have like a rubber band here like most other teams to shoot the plane or the drone. Uh, have, you, have you been able to launch it yet at all on testing? Uh, we have not gotten the servo connected yet. So we have not been able to test it yet. Before we get to uh, questions about the robot or anything, you else you want to cover on the robot? Uh, I think that's everything on our robot. All right, let's get to some questions uh, from our audience here. All right, Ad BB asks, can you show your transfer system and explain it? All right, so our whole transfer system, let me get the robot turned around here. So. We have this full intake, uh, active intake system. At the front, I'll actually turn the robot off so I can move it by hand. But we designed this to be fully articulated so we can knock down stacks of pixels instead of only being limited to uh, just singular pixels. So it moves up our wheeled intake. 
And then if I can turn it here, I cannot. Gets goes through this small transfer tunnel and then back through our robot into our claw. That then gets picked up by our linear slides and we turn out and deposit. All right, Galaxy Bots is wondering, how do you angle your linear slides? So we angle our linear slides using a Go Build a Pan Kit that provides us about, off the top of my head, about 30 times to more torque than just the standard motor. And because it's a worm gear, that means that it's non-back drivable, which makes it ideal for adjusting the angle of our slide. We got time for one more question. Of course, if we have more coming in, we'll uh, ask Great Scott the answer to those offline as well. So let's grab one more. All right. Ben Overvich asks, what's the gear ratio on the intake, and how do you prevent two pixels from going in at the same time? So for our gear ratio, we just have the motor. We have um, a bevel gear, which spins this, which comes and spins down here, which is just all one-to-one, -one, which comes down to over here and spins this side as well, which is also one-to-one. -one. And then, yeah. Yeah, uh, to get a little more specific, we use, I believe, an 1150 RPM go build a motor and then one-to-one -one bevel gears to transfer all of the power into our intake. So, Greg Scott, as we wrap up here looking at the Robot, robot in 30 Hours Challenge, uh, what are you going to take from what you created here uh, into the competition season as you get ready for your first event? So, we are really hoping to pursue the active intake. We believe that a lot of teams are going to go after the passive, and I think that's going to lead to a lot of time being spent trying to line up the pixels in their intakes. I think with the active intake, that'll allow us to essentially own, you know, like touch it, own, it, uh, take the pixels with us and be able to transfer to our claw while simultaneously moving to the backstage. Uh, backdrop. Awesome. Well, Chris Scott, congratulations on a awesome robot in 30 hours. Really cool design, very unique as well, too. Uh, I'll just give him a big round of applause for an awesome robot in 30 hours. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.